بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم انادر انٹرسٹنگ لیکچر اباؤٹ میکینیکل وائبریشنس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی ووڈ بی ڈسکسنگ دی ایم بیلنس اینڈ ایکچولی روٹری ایم بیلنس سو ان دی بگننگ آف دی کورس وی ڈسکسڈ دی کازز آف وائبریشنس اینڈ ون آف دی مین کاز دیٹ وی ڈسکسڈ از imbalanced or imbalancing in the machine or imbalanced uh, machine so here you see an <coughs> imbalanced rotor uh, here the shaft is not passed to the uh, center of the rotor however it is uh, offset from the center of the rotor so bulk of the mass would be here so if this rotor is rotated it would uh, produce an excessive force and that force uh, <clears throat> would actually uh, uh, produce severe vibrations in the machine or in the system. Similarly, uh, a bent uh, or deformed shaft, if this <clears throat> rotor is rotated, so what would happen? The, this system would severely vibrate. it would severely vibrate so the imbalance the imbalance in the rotary machines or in every machine uh, would cause vibration and actually in the machines uh, it is one of the main cause similarly here you could see a fan fan has a number of blades if one of the uh, blade is let's say um, have some dirt so it would have more weight than the other two and it would produce a centrifugal force when it is rotated and that centrifugal force would produce vibration in the uh, rotor of the fan similarly if one of the plate is corroded because of any reason then it means that uh, the weight of this blade is uh, relatively small than the other uh, two blades so again a centrifugal force of the other two blades would cause severe vibration in this rotor so we already discussed that imbalanced machine components contain heavy spots which when rotated exerted a repeating force on the machine imbalance is often caused by machining errors non uniform material density or variation in bolt sizes air cavities in cast parts missing balancing weights incorrect balancing uneven electric motor windings and broken deformed corroded or dirty fan blades so these are actually some causes which could actually uh, will <coughs> make the machine rotor or shaft or moving part unbalanced and when that machine <coughs> shaft or rotor or part is <coughs> moved or rotated at <coughs> speed or high speed that centrifugal force exaggerates and that centrifugal force is actually cyclic uh, in nature it is repeating itself it is just like a uh, sinusoidal force and it would cause severe vibration in your system which need to be avoided we don't want vibration inside the machinery because number 1 it would affect the performance of the machine number 2 it would affect the job which you are doing on that number 3 number 3 the life of your machine would reduce with the vibration number 4 it is dangerous it could fail catastrophically and it is dangerous for the workers so <coughs> what we have to do we have to minimize the vibration in the machine so in the beginning from the beginning when we are manufacturing the machine we have to take care about the imbalancing in the uh, system we have to make it perfect near to perfect perfect is impossible but we have to make near to perfect so that there is no imbalance or uh, there is no imbalance and when it is operated 
at uh, speeds high speeds so the vibration uh, need to be uh, minimum so <clears throat> as we discussed a number of times in this course that uh, if we have a system and that system is somehow uh, it is vibrating uh, because of uh, imbalance uh, and that imbalance can can be of any reason because of any reason so the first step would be we have to model our system and the simplest model is actually lump parameter model first degree uh, one degree of freedom uh, lump parameter model so again we would be uh, first uh, model modeling our system let's say we have this uh, machine uh, lathe machine and we are rotating uh, a shaft this is the job we want to do uh, some job on this uh, shaft but uh, somehow this shaft is uh, imbalanced because of the reasons which we discussed uh, on the last uh, slides <clears throat> so if it is rotated in the chuck of the uh, rotor if the shaft or this assembly is imbalanced so it would produce a uh, vibration severe vibration so in order to study uh, this system or in order to analyze this system first of all what we have to do we have to do the modeling of this system so i am doing the lump parameter modeling so unbalance in rotating machinery is one of the main cause of vibration and the topic is rotating unbalance so first of all we have to model this so the mass all of the mass we are taking here all of the mass of the system uh, the mass of the whole machine uh, so the mass of the whole machine uh, and the shaft we are taking uh, here and we are representing this with this uh, rectangle and let's say that mass is capital m and <clears throat> then the unbalanced mass the unbalanced mass which is uh, on the system here let's say that unbalanced mass is represented by this small circle and it is m and e is the uh, offset of this mass from the uh, center of rotation the center of rotation of the chuck let's say this is the chuck this is the center of rotation of the uh, chuck and this is the uh, uh, unbalanced mass so e is actually the offset or eccentricity uh, of this uh, unbalanced mass and the chuck is rotated and let's say the angle of rotation at this instant is theta omega is theta by t so uh, theta is actually uh, omega t so actually this is uh, angle rotation because we know that angular frequency omega is uh, actually uh, rotation that is uh, angular rotation which is theta by time so from there theta is equal to omega t and all of the stiffness of the machine is actually we are taking uh, all of the stiffness in these two uh, springs and the energy losses which are happening uh, in the machine uh, during the vibration uh, we are taking all of those energy losses or energy dissipation in this uh, damper represented by c and this represents the foundation this is the fixed end of the machine this is the foundation and we are assuming that because of the uh, vibration the machine is only moving in the vertical direction so we have constrained we have constrained uh, our system in the other uh, two directions that is in the <coughs> y direction so only it is moving in the vertical direction so let's say at this instant the uh, displacement of the mass is x and we are taking this x from the equilibrium position so this is our uh, lumped uh, parameter model uh, for our system we are considering uh, we are not considering but we are modeling it as a one degree of freedom uh, system and one degree of freedom lump parameter model lump uh, spring mass uh, damper system so the <coughs> study uh, that uh, is concerned about these two issues uh, number one what is the magnitude x of the steady state motion of mass so
so this is the response of the system x of t and uh, we are interested uh, that what is the amplitude of the steady state uh, response how much second how much force is transmitted to the foundation ground when this machine is uh, vibrating because of uh, rotating unbalance how much force is transmitted to the foundation that is also of concern because uh, last time we discussed that from the uh, <coughs> foundation of if this machine is vibrating so from the uh, force would be transmitted to the foundation and that foundation would also vibrate if there is adjacent machinery here so because of the vibration of the foundation that machine would also vibrate and we discussed that as a base excitation for the other machine the adjacent machine the problem would be the base excitation <clears throat> the machine itself let's say the machine itself is a balanced one it is not vibrating because of rotating unbalance but because of the vibration of the adjacent machine the force is transmitted into the foundation and the foundation is vibrating and because of that that machine is vibrating and it is affecting the efficiency and performance of that machine so actually uh, in order to uh, reduce uh, the vibration uh, of or rotating unbalance because of rotating unbalance we have to study it we have to come up with some mathematical model and then we have to simulate that model and then we have to uh, look at uh, the simulation and we have to do interpretation that what at what <coughs> speeds we have to run and how to minimize uh, how to minimize the level of vibrations in uh, this type of machines so we have the lump parameter model for our uh, rotating unbalanced uh, machine here m is the uh, capital m is the total uh, mass of the system small m is the unbalanced mass e is the eccentricity of the unbalanced mass from the uh, center of the rotation so now it is the time for uh, some mathematics first we have to uh, <clears throat> come up with the equation of motion uh, for our system so in order to develop the equation of motion Uh, we have to use the newton's um, second law of motion which is the summation of all of the forces uh, along the displacement x it is equal to it is equal to mass into inertia <coughs> uh, mass into acceleration sorry not inertia mass into acceleration so here <coughs> we have two masses one is the total mass of the system and other is the unbalanced mass so this part of the equation would have two parts so the total mass of the system is m and from that we are subtracting the unbalanced mass uh, small m so <coughs> the mass which is actually moving up and down so the mass which is moving up and down is actually uh, capital m uh, minus small m and its acceleration is x double dot so we got this component next we have to treat this mass the small mass uh, small mass the unbalanced mass so unbalanced mass plus unbalanced mass m and uh, let's say let's say the displacement displacement of this unbalanced mass at this instant is let's say xm xm is actually different than x because because this mass is also rotating this mass is rotating and also translating so small mass m is actually translating which is uh, x which we are representing with x and at the same time it is rotating so actually its displacement would be a little bit different we will we will uh, discuss that in a few seconds and the uh, net mass that is capital m minus small m actually <coughs> it is actually translating only so this is the uh, <coughs> uh, translatory uh, inertia and this would have uh, translatory and also rotatory inertia xm what is xm if we uh, <coughs> look here 
xm is actually x at this instance uh, xm is x this displacement and then plus this distress displacement and let's say the displacement from here to here is let's say xe so xm that is the uh, linear displacement uh, in the vertical direction of unbalanced mass m uh, would be xm and it would be x plus xe so uh, next we have to express xe in terms of uh, the parameters that is e and omega t so we have to take this small right angle triangle uh, taking or considering this small right angle triangle this angle this angle is omega uh, t uh, the vertical that is the perpendicular the perpendicular is x e and the hypotenuse is e so in this right angle triangle uh, sine omega t is equal to uh, perpendicular which is x e by hypotenuse which is e and from there we could express x e in terms of eccentricity e and sine function uh, or omega so x e is equal to e sin omega t so putting for this x e here x m would be equal to x plus e sin omega t so <clears throat> now here the uh, forces which are acting on the mass we would have a spring force and we would have a damping force at this instance the mass is moving in the upward direction so the springs would expand or stretch so it would pull the mass in the downward direction and if the spring force is in the downward direction so it is opposite to the displacement at this instance so we have to take this negative so minus the spring force is kx the damping force is always opposite to the motion at this instance the motion is in the upward direction so the damping force will be in the downward direction so minus cx dot so these are the two forces which are acting on the mass and on the other side we have uh, m minus m x double dot plus m and second derivative and the second derivative because this is acceleration x m is the displacement it is the displacement of the unbalanced mass so if you uh, differentiate this once with time we would get velocity of uh, uh, velocity of the unbalanced mass and if we differentiate uh, this uh, for the second time we would get the acceleration so here uh, this is actually the acceleration so putting for xm here uh, we have uh, developed uh, that uh, equation already so xm is x plus e sin omega t next we have to simplify uh, our equation so here we, if we remove the parenthesis uh, so we would have capital m x double dot minus small m x double dot plus m and if we operate this uh, derivative on this uh, uh, quantity which is inside the parenthesis so here we would get uh, x double dot this would become x double dot so we would have m x double dot and this here we have minus m x double dot so this would cancel with uh, this quantity so m x double dot would cancel so these two quantities would cancel with each other and when this is actually applied or <clears throat> on this term uh, e sin omega t so if it uh, it is um, uh, derivative once so we would get uh, ka minus uh, minus cos omega t and then omega would come out when it differentiate uh, omega t term and if it is differentiated again then we would have uh, uh, sine uh, omega t and another omega would come out from there so omega square so at, after two <coughs> differentiation with respect to time we would have e uh, omega square omega square uh, sine omega t with um, negative sign with negative sign so <coughs> with negative sign so we would have m on this side we would have minus m uh, e omega square sin omega t 
and bringing that quantity on the other side of the equation so we are bringing that on the other side of the equation so after simplification the equation would be minus kx minus cx dot plus m e omega square sin omega t is equal to capital m x double dot and rearranging the equation as we did uh, in uh, <coughs> previous lectures so we would have capital m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to m e omega square sin omega t so now this is the equation of motion for the system which is representing the dy dynamics of the system which is representing the uh, motion of the system so now using the mathematics uh, we come up with the governing equation which is representing the uh, dynamics of the system the equation of motion which is representing the motion and vibration of the system and if we look at the equation it is uh, ordinary differential equation second order uh, differential equation uh, non homogeneous differential equation because here we have a uh, function of time uh, a forcing function so it is non homogeneous it's a linear differential equation because uh, uh, x double dot has uh, power 1 x dot has power 1 and also x has power 1 so it is a linear uh, differential equation it is a differential equation with constant coefficients these coefficients uh, we are taking them constant capital m is constant c is constant k is constant so we have a differential equation uh non homogeneous and if we look at here here we have a uh, sine function and it is changing with time so and if we look here uh, this is uh, the amplitude this is amplitude of this uh, sine function so somehow somehow if we look at the equation uh, we could very easily recognize that uh, it is actually uh, somehow near to the uh, forced vibration fourth vibration so this unbalanced mass this unbalanced mass which has an offset or a centricity e it is actually uh, producing uh, this force it is producing this force so this unbalanced mass with centricity e it producing an unbalanced force if we bring this mass to the center then eccentricity would be zero and if you plug this uh, e zero then there would be no uh, amplitude so this quantity this term would become zero it would vanish so in that case there would be no vibration similarly if we remove this unbalanced mass so it m small m would become zero so if you multiply this quantity with zero it would become zero so this quantity term would again vanish and there would be no vibration so first actually if you want that uh, if you want to kill this vibration so um, you have to uh, actually balance your machine you have to either remove this mass <coughs> or you have to add an opposite uh, mass on the other side same mass equal mass on the opposite side so that these two balance each other and the vibration is killed out very clearly we are seeing that um, this forcing function this repeating force is because of this unbalanced mass m and <coughs> its offset and also if we look at here it is uh, there is also a quantity omega square so it means that if you speed up the machine if the rotation increases then this force this force would increase with the square of omega the square of frequency with the square of frequency so meaning that as you are increasing the speed the amplitude or the magnitude of this force would tremendously increase so you, we could also see uh, this here in this equation so now we have the equation of motion which is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to m e omega square sin omega t and this equation is actually uh, similar uh, to the one that we discussed in one degree of freedom uh, force vibration Uh, which is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to f naught sin omega t. So it means that here f naught <coughs> is actually equal to 
uh, m e omega square. In other words, uh, in our uh, further derivation, if we replace uh, m e, uh, if we replace f naught by m e omega square, then we would uh, get the results for the rotating and balance. So. <clears throat> In case of forced vibration, we discussed that the equation of motion is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f naught sine omega t. And the steady state response for such a system uh, is x steady state of time is equal to capital X sine omega t minus phi, where, where capital X is the amplitude of the uh, steady state response uh, and phi is the initial phase uh, or the phase difference between the forcing function and the response. Uh, and for such system, uh, we uh, discussed that the amplitude uh, can be modeled with this equation. So capital X is equal to F naught K minus M omega square whole square plus C omega square under the root. So this is the uh, amplitude of the steady state response in terms of stiffness, mass and amplitude. And uh, in terms of uh, damping ratio and frequency ratio, uh, this equation could be uh, deduced in this form: x k by f naught is equal to one over uh, one minus omega by omega n square whole square plus two zeta omega by omega n uh, square under the root. And the phase, <coughs> this initial phase phi. Uh, in terms of uh, damping stiffness and uh, mass is 10 inverse c omega k minus m omega square and in terms of damping ratio and frequency ratio phi is 2 uh, zeta omega by omega and 1 minus omega by omega and all square so we have these models we have already developed these models for the <coughs> single degree of freedom uh, force vibration so here if we compare uh, this equation of motion with the equation of motion that we developed uh, in the rotating unbalance, so very easily we could uh, see the similarity in both of the equation. Only what we have to do, we have to replace F naught by M E omega square. Here in this case, this is the magnitude. This is the magnitude of the forcing function or force of excitation or disturbance. So we have to replace this F naught with M E omega square and then we would get the amplitude, this amplitude in uh, case of steady state response of this system. So doing that, so we have our equation of motion. Now we come to know that here F naught is M E omega square. We know actually the uh, mathematical model for the response of the system because here we could easily see that the excitation is sinusoidal so if the excitation is sinusoidal, so the response would be also sinusoidal and we could represent that with this mathematical model, uh, X is the amplitude and the initial phase, uh, the phase difference between the excitation, force of excitation and response is phi. And we know that this phi, this uh, phase difference would be because of the damping in the system because there is already damping in the system. So we have to plug this phi here. Uh, frequency ratio uh, is actually uh, for <coughs> frequency of excitation to the natural frequency of the system. So omega by omega n is equal to R. So in that <coughs> mathematical model, we have to replace F naught by M E omega square. So we would have capital X by K M E omega square and it is equal to one and replacing uh, omega by omega n by frequency ratio r then we would have 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square under the root and the initial phase phi is uh, equal to 10 inverse 2 zeta r 1 minus r square so we have the mathematical model in terms of zeta uh, damping ratio and frequency ratio for the uh, displacement uh, for the amplitude and also for the initial phase. Once we know capital X and phi, then it means that we know uh, the steady state response. We could plot this steady state response. So because in this steady state response, in this mathematical equation, uh, this capital X we don't know and initial phase we don't know. Once it is uh, known with these mathematical models, 
or we could find out with these mathematical models. So it means that now we have the solution of this uh, differential equation. So we got our mathematical models here for the, uh, this is actually the frequency response. This is the frequency response of our system. Um, this is the uh, initial phase. We could rewrite this equation, uh, the frequency response or the dimensionless equation uh, also in the alternative form. So we know that omega n, omega n is the natural frequency of this system. Omega n is actually equal to, in this case, this omega n is equal to under the root k by capital N or omega n square is actually equal to k by capital N. And from there we could uh, write for the k. k is actually equal to capital M omega n uh, square and r is equal to omega by omega n. So here instead of this k uh, we could put uh, capital M omega n square. So if we put uh, here for m omega n square, so <coughs> further we have to simplify uh, the equation. So uh, here we have omega n, here we have omega n, omega n square and omega n. So bringing that omega n on this uh, here uh, below this omega square, then we would have omega uh, square by omega n square which would be actually equal to r square, which is actually r square. And bringing that r square on this side of the equation, because here uh, the frequency ratio, we are keeping the frequency ratio on this side of the equation. So bringing that r square on that side of the equation, so we are bringing that r square here. So you see that r square here. So on the uh, this side of the equation, we would have capital M, capital X by small m and small e. The equation on this side is uh, has no unit dimensionless. Similarly, the equation on this side is dimensionless. The equation on this side is dimensionless. Also, on this side is dim dimensionless. So we have two uh, actually uh, forms for the rotating unbalance. Here you see that the rotating uh, unbalance equation is in, in form of stiffness. Here you see stiffness. Here and the frequency of excitation. Here uh, here in this. Um, alternative form, you see capital M, uh, the total mass of the system, uh, and you are not seeing the frequency of excitation. So you could use both of these uh, forms, uh, which one is actually more easy to apply in specific cases. In some cases we have to use this equation, in some cases we have to use this equation. For example, if you know M, uh, capital M, small m, and E, and in that case, we have to use this equation. And if we know the frequency of excitation, small m, e, and k, then you have to use this equation. So both equations we could uh, use. So now we have the actually uh, mathematical models for the amplitude and also for the phase, initial phase. So the next phase is actually we have to simulate these, uh, these mathematical models in order to <coughs> further study the response of the uh, system. So now here uh, you see the simulation. Actually this equation if you go back and compare uh, this side of the equation, it is 100% 100% similar to the case of the base excitation in terms of the relative displacement. So here you see this uh, simulation. So on this side, this side uh, uh, actually we have uh, this side is for the rotating unbalanced and <clears throat> this side, the vertical side, represents uh, the ratio of capital M, uh, capital X by M E, whereas this side uh, actually represents the Z by Y, uh, which is the case of the base excitation. Both of the equations are similar, so actually in uh, most of the vibration books, you would uh, find one graph for both of the uh, simulations. And the horizontal is the uh, frequency ratio. So for a frequency ratio from uh, from zero to uh, four, and for a number of different values of uh, damping ratio, we are actually plotting uh, this quantity that is m x by m e. And after plotting, uh, you could see uh, these plots. So <clears throat> this plot is for 
uh, damping is equal to uh, for damping zeta is equal to zero uh, damping ratio uh, zero damping ratio point uh, one damping ratio point one five damping ratio point two five point uh, five and damping ratio one so if we uh, look at the plot or uh, you see a peak here uh, here it means that the vibration is a little bit uh, severe and uh, why it is severe again the same reason uh, if you look at the uh, frequency uh, ratio the frequency ratio is one uh, frequency ratio uh, one means that uh, the frequency of excitation is actually equal to the reson is actually equal to the natural frequency of the system so this represents the resonance uh, this represents the resonance con condition so near the resonance uh, the amplitude of vibration would be uh, severe and uh, you could see that the amplitude of vibration at the resonance can be controlled with uh, damping or damping ratio so you could see that if you increase the damping then the amplitude of a vibration at the resonance would decrease so meaning that with damping in the system we could control the severity of the vibration at the resonance uh, on this side of the uh, plot uh, the uh, frequency ratio is less than 1 uh, and you could see uh, here that all these lines irrespective of the damping ratios all these lines are converging with each other and at lower uh, frequency of excitation uh, omega actually the <coughs> uh, rotating unbalance is very very small it is very small it is near to zero so meaning that at lower speeds at lower speeds actually it physically means that at lower speeds lower uh, frequency ratio means lower omega lower omega means lower rpm of the machine omega is actually uh, is equal to 2 pi n by 60 where n is the revolution per minute rpm of the machine rpm of the shaft so at lower speeds actually the vibration would be very very small it would be very very small but as you speed up the machine and as the frequency of excitation matches the natural frequency then actually uh, we are expecting uh, severe vibration severe vibration and then as you speed up the machine as omega is increased the frequency ratio is increased you could see uh, that all these lines are converging each other and these are converging at which value these are converging at a value of one one so one mean what one means m x by m e is equal to one and it means m x is equal to m e it means that at a very high uh, speed at a very high uh, frequency ratios uh, m x would be equal to m e so a very uh, very important uh, conclusion a very important conclusion because simply by knowing this conclusion very easily we could uh, find out capital X if somebody uh, say to you that what would be uh, the amplitude of the steady state response in case of rotating unbalance of this machine so simply you, what you have to ask that what is the frequency ratio and if the frequency ratio is high he, he say that the frequency ratio is 10 20 30 40 then very easy you have the model you have the mathematical model that uh, at very high angular uh, at very very high frequency ratios mx is actually equal to me so from there capital x is what capital x is me by capital m so in uh, your other question would be uh, give me the values of capital M, small m and e and once you have these three values so within seconds you would do the calculation and come up with capital X and you would tell him that capital X would be actually equal to this much this much millimeter so this is actually the beauty of the uh, mathematical modeling 
and this whole exercise that within seconds without any experimentation without any uh, uh, hard work we are getting the answer very simple very easy although there would be error there would be error uh, small error in our computation that error would be from 2 to 10 percent but that is acceptable that is acceptable because of the ease with which we are doing this uh, calculation so <clears throat> Now, we come to know that actually if we are uh, uh, speed up the machine, then actually at high speeds, at very high speed, the rotating unbalance would uh, actually gone out. But if we are near to the resonance, then expect that uh, your machine would severely vibrate. Normally, normally, uh, actually, uh, what we are doing in uh, practically if we you if you speed up your machine slowly and gradually if you speed up your machine if the shaft of the machine is speed up slowly and gradually the rpm of the machine is increased slowly and gradually then your a machine or apparatus would see the resonance and it would vibrate severely in case if you speed up your machine abruptly quickly if your machine is accelerated quickly it is speed up quickly the shaft is rotated quickly so actually what happens actually you cross the resonance very quickly and you are not giving the uh, your system the time to resonate so in that case your apparatus or the system would not see the resonance you would move from this point to this point very quickly if we move from this point to this point uh, very quickly so your machine would not see this resonance so that is actually very important and if you are doing uh, the lab in the lab there is an experiment about the force vibration and uh, natural frequency of the system so if in that apparatus if you uh, uh, increase the frequency of excitation slowly and gradually so <clears throat> your apparatus would see the resonance and if you uh, speed up or if you increase the force of excitation quickly so you would not see the vibration severe vibration you would not see the resonance so actually practically uh, what is our approach practically normally we speed up our machine quickly so that it doesn't see the resonance but for that what is important for that it is important that you know the resonance to you know the resonant frequency resonant frequency of your equipment you must know the natural frequency of your system so that you know the uh, once you know the resonant frequency of your system omega n then uh, we would uh, design our system in such a way that uh, it would cross those resonances all those resonances very quickly so because we don't want such a uh, design where uh, the uh, omega that is uh, angular uh, rotation of the machine is near to the uh, any uh, natural frequency of the system so very very important uh, conclusions from all this modeling and uh, <coughs> uh, modeling and uh, mathematics and actually uh, simulation so if somebody wants you that uh, we don't want that our machine vibrates excessively uh, when we start up so the easy question is you have to uh, speed up your machine quickly and you would not see the resonance your machine would not vibrate they would say that oh this is just a magic but it would be not a magic it is science so next actually so as we come to know that it is very very important uh, that we must have a balance uh, rotor or impeller or blades uh, for the rotary machine so normally in the rotary machines uh, before during the manufacturing before the assembly we have to actually uh, balance our rotor so there are two types of balancing one is the static uh, balancing and the other is the uh, dynamic uh, balancing so first uh, when the rotor is uh, manufactured 
because we are doing uh, manufacturing so their the rotor uh, the possibility is that the rotor may be unbalanced and the reason again fabrication error uh blow holes in the cast uh, material because this uh, shaft is cast so there could be blow holes and even uh, non homogeneous material the material would be non homogeneous the density would be different at different places uh, <clears throat> and also it would be possible that the uh, blades these blades would have uh, dissimilar not similar uh, weights uh, <clears throat> so there could be a number of cause, causes for uh, the unbalance in this rotor so first of all we have to balance this rotor so normally in industry uh, they have a balancing machine as you are seeing here this is a balancing machine so you have to put your rotor on the balancing machine and in the static balancing we manually uh, rotate uh, we manually rotate uh, this rotor slowly and gradually and see for example if the weight uh, is a little bit more here if i move this rotor uh, manually here so and if i release it because of this excessive weight it would come back uh, to this position so it means that the rotor is unbalanced and then uh, uh, this is actually uh, we call uh, static balancing and in the dynamic balances we have to rotate uh, this machine Uh, with a variable speed uh, motor we would uh, slowly and gradually increase the uh, speed of rotation we would rotate this machine and we would note down the vibration if there is no excessive vibration then it means that your rotor is balanced but if your rotor is vibrating excessively we must also know the natural frequency of our rotor by this way we could also find out the natural frequency of our rotor and at the same time uh, we would note down the excessive vibration and then actually once if it is unbalanced uh, then we have to uh, go for the spots where the weight is more or the weight is less we have to go for those, those spots let's say if the weight is more at this uh, area so actually by slight drilling uh, drilling Uh, we call, we have to remove uh, mass uh, by uh, drilling so by doing so we have to uh, balance our rotor or if you want to add uh, material so just by welding small mass in the form of nut and bolts or other <coughs> pieces of metal we have to add small mass uh, to the rotor and again you have to rotate your uh, rotor and you have to see uh, its behavior so somehow by this way uh, we actually balance our rotary machine so that is actually very very important if your rotor is not balanced and you put in the stator and if that is actually uh, installed on at the site and if it is uh, then operated so it would severely vibrate and if it severely vibrates so it would uh, damage the attached machine the uh, that is the generator also with the passage of time it would have a uh, lower life so the maintenance cost would be very very high and it could also fail catastrophically so we which we don't want also here you see the uh, balancing of pump uh, impeller this is the uh, centrifugal pump so this is the rotor of the pump and it is here on the uh, balancing machine so again static balancing and then dynamic balancing if there uh, is excessive weight at some areas so we have to uh, remove that weight by uh, drilling or if some portion has uh, 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 less weight so just by adding nuts and bolts or screws we could Uh, balance this uh, impeller this is the rotor of the uh, gas turbine uh, here we have a number of rows of uh, moving blades these are rows of moving blades and it is very very important to actually balance the rotor of the gas turbine because rotor of the gas turbine have row of moving blades and in the stator we have rows of fixed blades 
and the gap between uh, the rows of moving blade and rows of fixed blade is in millimeter, few millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter. So, <clears throat> and if your uh, rotor vibrates excessively, then the rows of moving blades actually come in contact with the rows of fixed blade, and then your gas turbine would explode. It would explode, and it would explode just like a bomb and this actually happens in aircraft in aircraft you see that uh, the uh, jet engine which is a gas turbine power plant uh, if the vibration uh, becomes excessive and the rows of moving blade and rows of fixed blade comes in contact so the jet engine catches fire or either it explodes uh, so the failure is catastrophic failure which we don't want so in the from the beginning uh, during um, manufacturing, we have to balance this. Again, the static balancing and the dynamic balancing. And we have to go for the sparse, unbalanced, sparse or unbalanced uh, blades. So either we have to replace those blades or we have to remove uh, small, small material uh, from the back of the blades with drilling or add uh, small materials in the form of small screws or small welding parts so that it is balanced. Uh, this is the uh, train or wheel on the balancing machine. Again, we want this to be balanced. If it is not balanced, then your train would severely vibrate. Your bogies would severely vibrate. And it would uh, affect the um, uh, whole uh, bogey or train, uh, its life, and also the passengers would be not comfortable, which we don't want. Uh, this is a compressor, rotary compressor uh, on the balancing machine. Again, you see uh, a rows of uh, uh, moving blades. And uh, again, as we discussed that in compressor, we have rows of moving blades, rows of fixed blades that are on the stator. And the gap between the moving blades and the uh, blade, uh, fixed blades is in few millimeters, one millimeter, two millimeters. So if your uh, rotor vibrate excessively, then uh, your uh, equipment, your uh, compressor, which is very, very expensive. It is not cheap that if uh, it is the rotor is gone or the stator is gone, it is not in few uh, dollars or few rupees that you would go and buy in the market. Once it is destroyed, so it means millions of dollars uh, lost to the company and you would lose your job. The engineers working on the uh, rotary compressor or rot gas turbine, their job would be gone. Because these are critical machines, they would have no standby. Because they are very expensive, so for expensive machines in industry, we don't have standby uh, equipment or machinery. Pumps, small pumps, valves, etc., and electric motors, those would have, they are actually of low cost, so we would have standby, two standby, three standby. If one fails, then the other would start. If second fails, the third would start. Because you can go and buy a pump, it is of few thousand rupees, but these are critical machines. Critical machines are those machines which are very, very expensive, and normally inside the industry, we have only one installation on the field because we cannot afford the uh, standby because standby would have uh, it would have it would be not economical because standby would be there for uh, once it is failed and if uh, it is billions of dollars and your uh, uh, your management would not prefer that that would be not feasible so critical machines is always one and the critical machines actually uh, normally in, in industry we have to continuously monitor the critical machine for example gas turbine power plant rotary compressor gas turbine steam turbine so these are critical machines so before buying uh, those actually we uh, the companies who are manufacturing those machines they 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 are actually working to minimize the vibration uh, in those machines. So the main cause in those rotary machines would be the rotary unbalance. So first we have to actually balance uh, those uh, rotors.
again you are seeing uh, the uh, water wheel on the balancing machine another <coughs> uh, normally you have seen this in your daily life those guys who have vehicles normally if your wheels are not balanced so it would produce severe vibration in your vehicle if the uh, tires are deformed or the uh, rim uh, is deformed or if your rim is not balanced or your wheel is not balanced so it would produce severe uh, vibration in your vehicle your vehicle would move uh, side by side and the passenger uh, sitting there that would be not comfortable and also it is very dangerous that you would go through some accident and there would be some casualties so for that actually it is very important to balance the car uh, wheels so here you see you may have you could see uh, these balancing machines they are actually with the uh, people who are actually uh, balancing your vehicle so these machines are available uh, in pakistan so in peshawar so you could go and you would see there if you have the experience you could actually again go and see how they are balancing those wheels so balancing of automobile uh, tires also in automobile uh, you could go and see uh, this thing uh, on the rim uh, there is a weight and the main 